All right, so hi everyone, and thank you for joining us today for Mobile Worker Access to Critical Information. I'm Rob Dumont, and today I have the arduous task of making the case to you that mobile is an important concept in the world of business. Uh, this will, of course, be very difficult, so bear with me as we work through it. <laughs> I could, of course. So our agenda today, I'm going to start with a really quick overview of who we are, so Archeo Solutions and, and what we do. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about mobile in the world of, of ECM and um, why it's important and why people are interested in it. And then um, after that short bit, we're going to flip over and we're going to show you a mobile enterprise content management demo uh, using actual software and actually using a mobile device. So really quickly on Archeo Content Management Solutions and who we are, uh, we're an organization based in Western Canada that has an enterprise content management focus. We're 100% focused on ECM, that's all we do. Um, from a technology perspective, we're 100% focused on IBM, but we also do some technology agnostic work as well um, for, for people that are planning out and, and strategizing on enterprise content management. Uh, we've got two decades of ECM experience and focus entirely on creating elated end users so that organizations receive the benefit of users actually using the system. And our underlying um, attempt whenever we're on any one of these projects is to really create value uh, from through business-focused solutions. So I'm not going to stay here long, but here's some of the solutions that uh, we have created for our clients. Um, that they're using in production and, and generating business value out of. And you can come back to the YouTube and, and flip back to this if you want to look at it. And again, if you have any questions, definitely type them in. And just a quick overview of, of uh, cross-sampling of some of our customers who have successful ECM deployments from us. And I'd just like to take a moment here to point out that we have a, a broad geography and, and a range of industry verticals that we work with. Um, so although we specialize in enterprise content management, um, we are a generalist when it comes to uh, geography and, and the type of business that we um, help to achieve enterprise content management. So I've been talking for a bit. Uh, my name is Rob Dumont, and today uh, John Cave is going to be joining me and doing the actual software demo, and my contact details will be at the end if you want to reach out to me afterwards. So moving on to mobile. Um, just a little bit of level setting when it comes to mobile. Um, this is probably obvious, I'm sure you have one, um, but pretty much everyone now has mobile devices and particularly everybody in the corporate world. And in our personal lives, our mobile devices have actually become ubiquitous. It's something that we have with us at all time. Um, the vast majority of people are actually rarely more than three feet from their phone at any point, uh, day and night. Uh, most people leave their phone on day and night. And there's been a study recently where about 50% of people actually check their mobile phone more than 1,500 times in a week. So that's actually, on average, uh, more than 200 times a day. Uh, one in 10 of people look at it as soon as they wake up in the morning. And 50% of millennials actually will check their phone within five minutes of waking up. So because of this ubiquitousness and how we use it so much and see so much value in our personal lives, a lot of people see possibilities in their professional lives too. And I'll be getting to that in just one second, but I mentioned that I wanted to do a little straw poll in the little interactive section, and this is that part now. So what I want to see is a show of hands. So first off, if you are paying attention, I haven't put you to sleep yet, can you click on that little raise hand just to, to get a little practice here? I'm seeing some people are already starting to raise their hand. That's awesome. Thank you. Wow, 100%. So I'm going to put your hands down. Now, can you tell me, show this on my slide here. If you checked your mobile device before getting up this morning, can you raise your hand and, and tell me that you've done so? Just letting everybody raise their hand. That's impressive. So we actually have about 75% of attendees actually check their mobile. So that, that's better than average on, uh, on those stats that we were looking at before. Um, if you're mobile, I'm going to put your hands down. If your mobile is within three feet of you right now, can you raise your hand, please? Giving everybody a chance here, and probably no surprise, everybody is checking their phone first thing in the morning before they get up, and it looks like we've got about, uh, about two-thirds of people have uh, their mobile device within three feet of them right now. Uh, so final question, are you participating on a mobile device right now. 
please raise your hand. Not bad. We actually have about 15% of people that are actually watching this on a iPhone or, or calling in from a, a phone right now or watching it on a tablet. So I'm um, quite impressive. And uh, last but not least, um, please raise your hand if you never or if you do not use a mobile device for work. Please raise your hand. I'll give you a second. Oh, it looks like one of you actually did that. So <laughs> I don't know if you're joking with me or if you actually don't, but that uh, puts you in a definite majority. All right, so I'm going to put everybody's hand down now, and we are going to move on. So I mentioned that mobile devices are ubiquitous in our personal lives, and, and one of the things that people use quite often is personal cloud. So with the advent of Bring Your Own Device in organizations and people actually using their iPhones and their Android devices and even their tablets in the work, and with the fact that almost every device actually includes a personal, a personal cloud like iCloud or like Dropbox or Box um, or OneDrive in order to allow you to store and sync files on your mobile device, people are starting to change their expectations around what their devices can actually do. Now, personal cloud is not technically enterprise content management, but it is highly correlated because it is where people are going out and they're opening files and they're doing it on their mobile device in order to get some additional type of information or in order to allow them to do some task that they wish to do. Now, what this ends up doing is it sets expectations with people around uh, service levels and, and convenience of access to information. And they want to receive similar service from their enterprise IT, from their enterprise file stores and enterprise content management, um, perhaps not being aware that there are additional concerns when it comes to corporate content around things like governance of that content, around records management of content that's added, um, perhaps security concerns. We've seen a lot of security leaks lately, uh, some high profile ones like the Sony one and, uh, and, and data leaks and so on. So, the users are coming out with demands, and what we're finding is that they can be divided into two different groups of users. The first are active users, and these are field workers, so people that are out often away from the office, and what they need is they need to be able to do their job, but in order to do their job, they need to be able to go out and find information on demand, and that information isn't always in their email, it isn't always in their CRM, it isn't always in some type of application. They need to actually go and look it up inside of documents, inside of PowerPoints. And so these active users, as a part of this, they want to be able to go and actively retrieve information, sometimes even provide live feedback on that. So maybe make a note that a procedure has an exception that needs to be included in the procedure, or um, there is a, a map or a diagram that has incorrect information on it, and that needs to be corrected. Uh, we also see a lot of passive actors. Um, now, these are people that want to make use of time which would otherwise be wasted in their lives. So, uh, you know, nobody really goes to the bank anymore because you can deposit checks on your phone, which, by the way, is an, is an ECM app. Um, but there are still lots of times in our day where we are waiting and we have two minutes or three minutes or five minutes to kill, and a lot of folks with their mobile devices want to make some use of that. And so being able to uh, um, read an email from work is something that people have had for quite some time, but being able to approve a workflow, approve a, an expense report, a contract that's come by, um, being able to just quickly uh, read an attached ECM document is something that um, actually provides value because it's something you don't have to do later when you get back to your desk when you are um, focused back on work again. Now, some of you may have noticed that we already have a lot of mobile apps around things like content management and accounting systems and so on, um, but ECM is a bit late to the game, and it's important to note that there actually is a reason for this. Uh, one is that enterprise content management does have higher technical requirements. So content tends to be a bit larger in size. It's a little bit more difficult to deliver to mobile devices. Um, people have data caps. So it consumes more of a service that they're paying for on their mobile device. Um, in addition, it's not like an email where it's all in one application and it just has formatting and, and simple actions you can do with it. It's richer content. You might need to open it up in Excel or in PowerPoint, or maybe it's a drawing, an engineering drawing. Um, and then what people want to do with that 
content once they actually have access to it is more complex than what you would want to do with other types of, of applications. So you may want to modify it. You may want to take a, a copy of it and make it a PDF and send it to somebody um, because they need some information that's in that PowerPoint, but you want to send it to them as a PDF. So there's a lot more variations in the way that people would use the content in the process of actually doing their work, which makes it a little bit more difficult to actually get those applications out to the mobile users. But here's the key, we're actually there now and we're going to be showing you that today. So IBM is now creating and, and has been for actually a, a couple of years now mobile apps for uh, the enterprise content management products. So there is a navigator mobile app that allows you to browse and, and add content to your file net or your content manager or your CMOD repositories. Um, there is a DataCap mobile app, so you can actually scan with your phone. You don't have to go to a scanner or a multifunction device in your office. You can take a picture with your phone and you can actually draw a rubber band and do uh, zonal character recognition on what you've taken a picture of with your phone and have that data captured into your systems. Um, and if you have workflows and, and um, process automation inside of Case Manager, there's actually a Case Manager mobile app so that you can um, actually process your work and access the attached documents to a workflow on your mobile device. Um, there's also, this one isn't quite out yet, but there's a mobile office integration coming. So if you have Microsoft Word on your iPhone, you can actually check in a document directly from within Microsoft Word or Excel or PowerPoint. So IBM is focusing really more on what users need and want from mobile as opposed to providing everything. So a lot of things like being able to do quick search and access of documents, being able to quickly capture uh, an image or a, a scan of a document, being able to quickly approve a workflow. And um, more importantly, these apps are actually included. So if you own FileNet or Content Manager uh, on demand or, or CM8 and you have Navigator, it's included. If you own DataCap, it's included. Your users can use the mobile app. If you own Case Manager, it's included. So IBM is listening to the customers. And more importantly, when you look at what's out there in the world right now, they're actually leading in this area. So I promised I wouldn't talk for long. Um, I think I may have broken that promise a bit, but uh, it's definitely time to show some software. So I'm going to pass it over to John Keeve. And while I'm doing so, I just want to remind you, if you have any questions, um, just go into the GoToWebinar window and type in your question, and, uh, and we'll be answering them now. So I am going to pass control over to John. Thanks, Rob. You're welcome. OK, so I think Rob's done a great job giving you some, uh, some background. Uh, I'm fortunate to have the fun part of showing you how how happy you can make your users who are working out of the office and on the road with uh, mobile access to uh, your ECM content. And what I'm going to show you uh, on the screen is my actual uh, mobile iPhone that I use for work. Okay, perfect. So um, what I'm going to try to do is show you the uh, the benefits in kind of a real-world uh, demo scenario. So in this story, I'm going to play the part of uh, Bob, who's uh, outbound for uh, the organization that he works for or that I work for, and uh, he he will be traveling with business partners out in the field. So uh, we start off the story. Uh, Bob's traveling in the taxi to go visit uh, one of his business partners, and uh, he receives an email. Uh, an email is uh, an invoice from uh, one of his contacts, and it's a contentious invoice. So he knows that this document is going to need to be referenced by a number of people within his organization, and he's going to want to reference it when he's um, next visiting his, his business partner contact uh, out in the field. So I'll just uh, I'll find this email. So you can see I have this email from Darren. has an invoice. This is the contentious invoice. So I can uh, open that up on my iPhone, and now uh, by way of tapping on the uh, probably familiar icon in the upper right, uh, I can choose to open this in IBM Navigator. Now, Navigator is a secure application, so it does require a password to be entered when you run it. So I'll enter my password quickly here. And I'll choose my uh, ECM. And now we're in Navigator. And what I can do here is I have uh, previously created a number of favorites. So I can create favorites in Navigator as you would 
in, say, Windows Explorer or in your browser where you have bookmarks. It's a, that same sort of paradigm. So I can quickly go to where I want to uh, essentially file this content without having to, to dig around. So I'll choose favorites. I have this general folder that I've created as a favorite. And I'll go in here. You can see at the bottom of the screen is that contentious invoice document. So I'm going to select that. And now uh, I can add that document into my general uh, folder. And now if this was an existing document that I had checked out to review, then I could also check it back in with any, any changes I might have made. In this case, it's in that new document. So I'm going to simply choose to add the document. And uh, some of the uh, auto magic occurs here. I can choose what uh, type of document this is. Now, this is uh, an accounting document in that it's a contentious invoice, so I'll choose that, um, that document uh, class and now I'll be provided with some uh, additional attributes or metadata that I can define for that content. Some of them are filled out for me uh, automatically based on choosing the accounting document. Uh, store number uh, needs to be provided by me, so I can now put in 57, which is the store that this pertains to. In the upper right, you can see that there's an option to save. So now I save that document. This will place it in the uh, ECM, in that general folder. Well, and what's so great about this is in the past, uh, without this uh, capability, I would have had to think about who might need to reference this document. Uh, in the course of future conversations, I would have maybe emailed the document to a bunch of people just hoping that I get the right people. Um, now, I can simply add this in, um, define the uh, type and, and some of the specific metadata associated with that content, and now anyone in the organization uh, that needs to access that will be able to easily find it, and that will make it so much easier when I'm having future conversations where uh, I need to collectively reference that document with, with other folks. So now I'm continuing on in our, our story to visit with this uh, contact at the, uh, at the store. So. Uh, I will uh, just go back here in, in Navigator. And what I want to do now is uh, I want to have a conversation with my, my contact uh, about the, the new store. And uh, I want to provide some marketing information that we have for their, they're going to have a grand opening. So I have some information that would be useful to them. I'll provide that to them. So I'm going to perform a search. And I can easily do uh, uh, a couple of different types of searches. So I'll start off by choosing a uh, basically a template search. So this search is is predefined in terms of the types of criteria that I would want to use to uh, find the document different I'm looking for, the content I'm looking for. Um, you can see here we have document title, document type, store number. So I know that it's store 57 that I'm meeting with, uh, and the content will be uh, will be found by way of that criteria. So I enter store 57, I perform the search, and sure enough, there I might see at the bottom is this, this store 57 opening uh, PowerPoint. That's the document with that marketing information that I want to provide to the, the contact so that he can have a more successful uh, opening of his, of his store. Now, um, the other type of search that uh, can be performed is what's called a stored search. So similar to the, the search I just performed, there are a number of criteria. Uh, that are, are predefined. With a storage search, the values of those criteria are also um, predefined. So when I select that BP Store 57 search, the entire search runs automatically, and now I can see all of that uh, same content, but just with that one step, uh, which makes it quick and easy to find uh, via that, that predefined search this type of content that I'd be looking for. So now, I'm, I'm meeting with uh, my contact, Sarah, at, the, at Star 57. She wants to have this uh, successful opening. So uh, I'm going to review this uh, PowerPoint presentation with her. Now, she sees it and, and agrees that it would be very useful for her. She would like to uh, have a copy of that. So what I can do uh, to easily and quickly provide her uh, a copy of this information is, once again, I can choose in the upper left that familiar control from ILS, and I can, uh, oh, pardon me, I'm getting ahead of myself, I'll let me go back. What I can do is I can 
choose the uh, PowerPoint presentation again. I can choose more for an additional option to open this as a PDF. So now when I open this, this PowerPoint, again, the original document is a, is a PowerPoint slide presentation. I can open it now as a PDF, and now I can email this PDF to Sarah. Again, standard iOS um, uh, use case there. Uh, I'll send this to Rob, play the part of Sarah today. And away it goes. Now you can imagine in the past, uh, if I had needed to uh, perform a similar task, I might have had to wait till I was back in my uh, my main office, and then I might have had to use some additional tools like um, uh, a more advanced version of Adobe, where I could take my original PowerPoint and convert that, or or at least I'd have to save it as a power or as a PDF, pardon me, within uh, the PowerPoint application. But now I can be out on the road with my mobile device, quickly and easily create that PDF document that I can then forward to the uh, contact all from on my, my mobile device. So that gives you a, a sense of what's possible there. Now, in the course of the conversation I'm having with, uh, with Sarah about this new store opening, she's concerned about uh, some of the construction and design. There's an issue with the, uh, uh, with the stairwell that she uh, wants to talk to me about. So what I can do now is I can browse through my object store and I can go to business partners and I can go to facilities, which is where I'm going to have uh, engineering documents and the like. And I can find, you'll see here there's a floor plan for store 57. So great, I'm going to open that up. Uh, and now I can have a more meaningful conversation right there uh, with the contact about this issue or concern that she has with the, the stairwell in the, uh, in the design of the new location. And you can see I can use the standard pinch and zoom controls like I, I would uh, in virtually any other application on my iPhone. Uh, zoom in, maybe it's, it's this stairwell that's the problem. Uh, and then while in having that conversation, uh, I may want to capture something uh, on-site, a uh, photo to uh, also um, put into my uh, repositories so that that content can also be referenced by maybe my engineers back at head office that are going to help to solve this, this concern with the stairwell. So I'll show you how easy that is. Again, familiar iOS control, I uh, tap on the plus in the upper right, I choose to take a photo. Now I'll take a photo of my phone so you can see this is real time. So I just snap that photo again, standard controls. And now what's what's great here is I can uh, to conserve space and uh, performance, I can make this a small file simply from uh, choosing small from the drop down. I can also lower the quality. That too will make it a smaller file. And then you can see, uh, because I'm in that facilities folder, uh, again, there's some, some smarts happening here where it's automatically set as a construction and design document. I can put in a quick title. Um, I can maybe call this, uh, you know, stairwell concern. And then once again, this is store 57. So I'll add in the store number. And then upper right, choose to save. And what's great is that now you can see the stairwell concern uh, photo is now added into the uh, facilities folder uh, and can be referenced by engineers and, and whoever else might uh, be part of that conversation down the road. Now, while I'm in the, uh, the uh, list of folders here, I'll show the little uh, information icon. If I click on that, this is where you can create favorites. So, for example, if I felt that I was going to be... Um, wanting to add or reference facilities content often in the future, I could actually add this as another favorite. And when I add things as a favorite, I can also choose uh, whether or not they will be uh, synchronized uh, automatically so that I can access them when I'm offline as well. So if I go back to uh, favorites, you'll see there's a little uh, pink circle with arrows. That indicates that those favorites have been set to synchronize. So if uh, I'm actually uh, on site somewhere and don't have internet access, I can still reference that, that content on my phone. And the thing I would want to highlight most about all of this 
is that everything that I've shown is all out of the box functionality. So uh, mobile users, people that you have working out on the road uh, that want or would benefit from this capability, it's really just a matter of installing the uh, IBM Contact Navigator application on the device and then pointing it to your, uh, your ECM desktop. Uh, that's the, the term that's used. It's not an actual desktop, but basically point it to your, your ECM repository, and that's in very, very quickly, uh, and in enjoying those capabilities right away. So on that note, I will pass it back over to Rob. Okay, and I should be showing my screen there. It's showing up now. So um, thank you very much, John. Now, I just wanted to actually add a tiny bit to your demo. Um, I don't know if everyone recalls, but uh, John actually sent me a, uh, a PDF via email, and it actually arrived immediately. But uh, it looks like we're over by a minute or two, so if you need to drop, completely understand. Um, but yeah, please type your questions in, and we will answer them as, uh, as they come in. So we do have a comment here. Um, I'm trying to get everyone to the next slide. Uh, Ian Story has actually joined us from IBM on this call, and uh, and he is a, a lot of the brains and work behind this. And um, he let us know that I'd mentioned that the MS Office integration is coming, and and that apparently is planned by the end of this month to be to be out and available. So, uh, with if if all goes to plan and and uh, nothing comes up, uh, expect to see that by the end of this month. Actually, um, we also did have a question about. Um, about how data intensive is the exercise. Uh, the app is designed to tr to transfer data in a light manner. So when you're just browsing, it's not like going out to, um, you know, if you're on your computer and you're accessing a shared drive or something like that. It's, it's really just a web application. So it is fairly light. Now, when you do pull down files, you are actually pulling down that file. So if it's a 10 meg PowerPoint, then on your mobile device, you will actually use 10 megs of your data. Um, so it is something to to keep an eye on, um, but uh, as far as actually browsing and searching and, and using the app itself, um, that is quite efficient. So it, it's it's not near as much of a concern as it somebody who's actually going out and, and downloading very large files on a frequent basis. Okay, so it looks like that's it for uh, for questions, and, and that, so that is it for our session today. So uh, my phone number and my email address are up on the screen there. If you